Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, Bitcoin Prediction. I hope you had uh, an interesting day if you're in, uh, if you hold any Bitcoin. Um, well, if you haven't already heard, well, let me let me just go on this. Um, enjoy the uh, audio stereogram. Um, if you can parallel view or walleye view, you can th see the 3D image right here. If you're parallel viewing, anyway. Um, wow, that's kind of cool. Anyways, I, I'll hold this steady for you so you can see it, and. Uh, if you know how to see it in 3D, that's all right. If you don't, um, learn how to use your magic eye. You can see it. Anyways, um, so let's let's talk about. Let's just go right into it. <laughs> all right, the ETF was shot down, denied. So that's one down, and there's two more to go. So let's see if the other two get shot down. Uh, it seems like now that this first ETF got shot down, well, it's always been shot down. Um, three years going on. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever approve it. Um, who knows? But there's supposedly two other ETFs. We'll see how they fare. Um, so maybe they'll learn something. Uh, maybe it wasn't meant to be. But in either case, I don't think it really matters because uh, the, the price of an ETF... Before this decision was zero, the price of the ETF right after the decision is still zero. And uh, anyways, let's go take a look at the coin market cap. Let's just get right into it. Uh, today was so interesting on the price. It, it It's just crazy. But let's just go into coin market cap. I'm probably just going to just do a quick chart analysis and give you a price prediction for the rest over the weekend and see how it goes over on the Monday. So you can see we dropped, Bitcoin has dropped in market cap in a matter of, I don't know, a couple couple minutes from 20, 20 billion to 18 billion. That's pretty much almost the price. It's kind of a little ahead of itself. Um, let's see here, let's just go over it. Uh, you don't see the craziness here, um, but I'll go over the chart. But there's the chart for this. And then Ethereum, I don't know if, if this is properly updated or not, but Ethereum seems to be just doing fine. Looks like the, the, the banking coin <laughs> is doing great. Uh, oh, this is this is new. Dash. Dash is starting to come down. Uh, Dash was 50 before, and now it's starting to slightly come down here. I think everyone might be getting out of Dash. Uh, it's possible people might be getting out of Dash and going into um, um, other coins, maybe perhaps Bitcoin. Um, I'll go over a chart analysis, uh, show you what all happened. Uh, let's see here. This is uh, Litecoin. Oh, gosh. Okay, Litecoin. Not much difference. It did supposedly take a hit, but, uh, you know has nothing to do with the ETF and this is Monero kind of been trending down a little bit um, if I'm correct yeah Monero is trending down uh, Ethereum Classic has been also trending down so the only one uh, that's holding its price is Ethereum coincidence? I don't know uh, I never really trusted Wall Street or the SEC when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Um, I don't know. Just coincidence? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, that's the coin market uh, market cap. Might as well just take a look at some other things to see how the other uh, coins in particular that I've uh, done some artwork on has is holding up. Zcash is going down. Okay. Cash is going down, and then um, Dogecoin is probably oh, it is kind of affected, but not really. But most notably, I know I should probably stop covering Steam it, but look at Steam price. Steam price was really down for a while. Yeah, it was almost down to six cents. So it's it's taking a beating for no other reason. I I don't know why, but I think 
well, looks like uh, uh, my opinion to Steam was always a proof of stake, so proof of stakes always go down. Anyway, let's go to a uh, quick chart analysis. Um, well, let's, let's, let me go over the quick artwork here and kind of show you what I got here. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, if you don't know who this is, this is Bernie Madoff. And uh, if you don't know who he is, he created the biggest Ponzi scream ever on Wall Street. Now, uh, this happened a while ago, but I figured it was so representative of today of, uh, you know, what, what was going to happen with, with the ETF. Um, you know, this is, am I surprised? Not really. I did predict uh, that an ETF would get approved, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm okay with that, as long as I got my Bitcoins. Um, I'm assuming if you saw what happened with the price, it was hard to get into the exchanges, it was probably hard to get into GDAX, it was probably hard to get your orders fulfilled. Um, I haven't seen any news yet, but I was wondering if any trading engines failed during this time because it was crazy. So anyways, this is Bernie Madoff and there's the uh, <laughs> little symbol here and his hair is, uh, you know, he's pretty much, uh, you know, he's pretty much looks like he's in hell here somewhere and you, get, and you see his two little guns and then there's the ETF that's floating. Uh, it's, it's really a nice, <clears throat> it's really a nice uh, 3D here you can see his hair just the hair is just man on fire anyway the ETF is coming out these are all background the others are just background floaters um, this is a floater and you can see the ETF it says ETF and then two bullet holes right in the head by Bernie Madoff the most infamous the probably one of the most infamous uh, Wall Street You know, I don't know, he's not a banker or hedge fund manager or fund manager. Probably the most infamous hedge fund manager, not hedge fund manager, uh, just fund manager on Wall Street to date. So Bernie Madoff, Wall Street, uh, basically killed the ETF. Hmm, no difference to me. I actually slept, uh, I actually took a nap. Um, I was just trying to wait till the whole thing's over before I make a video. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but I still have my bitcoins and uh, I still own the private keys. So hopefully you won't have any problems um, coming in here, getting into your trading account. But let's go to the to the chart and let's see what happened. And here's the current price right now, uh, eleven twenty one. Wow. Okay, it's it's actually recovering. Amazingly, uh, I am on a I'm on a bit bit stamp twelve. Oh, I'm on twelve hour. So, uh, well, bit stamp twelve. Hour. Let me change it to one hour. Uh, bit stamp one hour. And yeah, geez, it is just look at that. Look at the craziness, the craziness here. And uh, here's the time. Here's the time and date. And uh, man, it was crazy. Um, woke up in the morning I knew the ETF decision was going to be today and I couldn't believe that I don't know if you can see that 1350 was the high for some reason I mean it was just it's just so weird it just the price spiked up to 1350 came down and this started just just hovering around right here and around this point and then um, again I was I was taking a nap. Uh, I was just waiting for this whole thing to be over because uh, I knew it was, it was going to be crazy. Uh, it almost reminded me a lot of if you all traded Forex and uh, you know how the uh, the uh, every now and then the Fed makes a decision on, on whether to raise interest or lower interest. It was almost like that. If you traded Forex, especially US Euro, US uh, Pound or it's anything US, US Yen, uh, U.S. Aussie or whatever, 
uh, right, like literally minutes, 30 to, to 15 minutes before uh, the announcement of any interest rate uh, hikes or lowering of the interest rate happens, the spreads start going crazy, and the spreads were crazy. I mean, at one point, this price had like almost, it, it literally had a $20 spread between the low and the high price, asking and sell price, asking bid price, almost, it was crazy. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to freak out. Anyways, it was it was not a good day to be a trader, especially if you were um, margin trading and you had some, some um, stop limits. You probably got knocked out. It was it was really ridiculous. Is all I can say. Um, whatever you had, if you were long or if you were short, if you had to stop somewhere, and you were margin trading and you were shorting or longing, you were probably knocked out today. Not a good day to be on the. Uh, well, it depends. Um, again, if you already had a position open, and you were shorting or longing, you you probably took a loss. If you had no position and you had a limit order around a thousand I'm gonna back up here I'm gonna back up to um, a thousand yeah right there see on the 12 hour if you had a limit order around a thousand you were golden you were golden you, you got a deal <laughs> All right you have a wonderful discount um, that's just my opinion so on a 12 hour here's what it looks like here and uh, we peak I, don't, I can't really consider this a high but it, it is a high 1350 this weird little spike up here um, anyway I, I wouldn't put much credence into this but I guess we can use it for it is it is the high so it is, it's part of the technical analysis but I would mainly look at the body of this and I would also try to look uh, look at the wick of this candlestick that's probably going to be your indication of where the support is. Support is right around here. Um, let me see, where, where did the support end up being? Uh, somewhere around there, uh, 7, 977. Uh, I'm sure you can find out what the exact low is, but that's probably a very good support. And so um, looking at this, uh, the shorter term average, the longer term average, it looks like they've crossed over. And we probably will take a downtrend um, it's probably going to trend down, but it's 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 uh, downtrending on an overall uptrending price movement. So you're probably going to see something similar to uh, let's see if I can pull back far enough. Yeah, okay. You're probably going to see something similar to to this, where you're going to get one, two, three. So you're going to get a three wave, a downtrending three wave on an uptrending overall. Uh, uptrend. So I would anticipate three waves. One, two, three. So this is probably going to be the first wave. One, and then you expect to pull up two, and then a three. And a three could be in the 900 because I'm looking for other support areas. And this area, this low right here, is a support. In my opinion so what you're gonna look for is one two and then a three I definitely think the the price will go below or hit at least hit this or go below because I'm saying it's gonna be around 900 so um, the wick of this is uh, really telling so I know this is the current price it may hold up but I think overall as time goes on you're gonna see this slowly trend downwards and it'll, it'll go up again, and then it'll probably make a little downtrending line here. It'll hit that, and then it'll go down one more time, and that's the third wave. And then from there, it can build up again. Uh, the good news is the fact that it went to 1350 is a high. That means there's a potential to reach up to that high one more time again. Um, that's what's going to happen. By the time we get to this third wave and start going back up, when you look at this price here, you're not going to remember, oh, this was a fluke. This was the ETF, the day the ETF went crazy. 
or the price of Bitcoin went crazy on, on the day of the ETF decision. People are going to forget about that. People have short memories. Uh, and then when you pull back over, let me see here. Let's pull back. One day. Okay, one day. Yeah, when you eventually, when time goes on, people are just going to look at this and it's just to, like like this. Remember, this was all, this was China? And and what was this one? This was a uh, BitPhoenix hack? Well, we've all <laughs> we've all kind of forgotten about that, right? It's, it's become part of the whole chart analysis. And so this also will become a part of the whole chart analysis. And when people look at this, it's just another candlestick. People won't remember, oh yeah, that was the day the ETF uh, was decided or the ETF was denied and the price went crazy that day. People won't remember that, okay? All right. Uh, hopefully you had some limit orders here. Oh, on, the, on the three day it just shows really beautiful shows really beautiful I hate hammers man I hate hammers I see that hammer and I just had a bad feeling anyways so it did touch here and um, it could possibly okay it could possibly now that I'm looking at the three day I know my views kind of change over time but I would recommend you look at it that way. Start on the hourly, do an analysis, start, go back, go to the 12, go to the one day, go to the three day, and then by the time you reach the one week, you'll come to an overall conclusion that, and, and, I'll, get, and I'll get to the one week, you'll come to an overall conclusion. So on a three, three day on Bitstamp, it, it's almost like textbook. This is almost like textbook here. And if you look at it, we're not really in a downtrend yet this 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 is a retracement and this retracement has been fulfilled by hitting this lower average but I would keep an eye on it because if it goes below this lower average I said uh, what I say 900 it could be possible because there's several instances where it does go below um, but we'll, we'll have to see and then again over time this is slowly gonna move slowly gonna move but it should be, we should l watch for it because if you do see this, the the shorter term and the longer term starting to cross over, that could mean, that could be an early sign of the overall trend starting to reverse. Okay, so, the, so there is something to look out for that. Let's see, let's go on to the one week and I'll give my final overall analysis. So... Um, all right, so o the overall one week, I said that we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's a gap here, a gap here, and a gap here. So we we'll may look for maybe a downtrend. Now, if you look at this one, this gap happened, right? And then this right here was a Bit Phoenix hack, right? I believe it. Yeah, that was a Bit Phoenix hack. So it's, it's it got ahead of itself, went down. Kind of started going, kind of, and then started going down, and then the big Phoenix hacks came down, and then boom. But we recovered from that. We went back up. This is the Chinese uh, freeze withdrawal. Um, uh, what are the People's Bank of China coming in and basically stopped margin trading and stopped uh, zero fees, and then eventually stopped withdrawals. And so if you look at this, it's almost like this is all part of the whole chart analysis. It's, it's almost like it had to do it. You know, there's some had there's some there had to be some kind of event that had to trigger this pullback eventually going back up. And then of course this represents the ETF. So is there anything to be afraid of? Is there anything to be like shocked? Not really. You know, if you when you when you look at chart analysis, if you if you look at it over, if you've done this long enough. You're gonna a month later when you look back at this, you're just gonna accept that. Oh, look at the chart analysis. The chart analysis said we're getting ahead of ourselves, and it was a pullback, and then we went up. That's all you're gonna remember. You're never gonna remember that this was China uh, freezing withdrawals. This was a big Phoenix hack. This was the ETF. It's just gonna look like a natural part of the overall trend and overall chart analysis. So nothing to worry about. Now on the weekly. Okay, Bitstamp Weekly. When I'm looking at this, is okay. This is just a retracement. Now, 
a couple things can happen overall. Uh, it can dip down a little bit lower, kind of like it just did here. Um, but uh, it seems more like this is a retracement. And if if we're fortunate enough to recover from this, it'll just hit right here as far as it'll go. And then it'll start coming back up again. But we'll have to see. Uh, remember, this is a weekly. You need at least uh, two to three different candlesticks to get a confirmation of, of what's going on. So we'll have to see uh, if we can get a little bump going up and then take another jab coming down. And then after that last jab, one, two, three. Um, it's possible. It's possible. So anyways, let's take a look here and what wave formation we're in overall because there are waves within waves within waves and it gets kind of really really confusing here. Uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, or is this one, two, three, four, five? Is this one wave, or is this one? Kind of, you kind of lose count of the waves. How the waves going? Right now, it's hard to tell. Um, far as I can see, or far as I can tell, or far as I can determine, that uh, this is we're still trending up okay if, if I if I just look at this if I pull back and I just look at this we're still trending up alright we're, we're literally still trending up uh, so it's it's very possible that uh, you know the price can go back up now there is something to watch out for because, uh, and you're not going to know it because it's going to take such a long time, is the price is going to reverse and trend downwards. Okay, so if that does happen, all right, this is the position that you're going to take. Um, you can do a couple things. You can continue just strategy overall just continue to just average cost um, if you may want to modify it instead of doing it on a weekly or on a daily uh, I would do it in a more infrequent way like a monthly or every two months so you can um, and, but I would buy the same amount me personally uh, I'm a little different I'm subject to whatever the miners can provide to me um, but I'll take it if the price is going down I, I'll take it you know considering that now I know that the all-time high is 1300 1350 on Bitstamp there's a probably I, I think there's really a good chance that it'll go back to that all-time high and break through that all-time high as well because well so far that's what is that's what it's been doing people <laughs> literally that's what it's been doing and so even if it comes back down to here to this low on that average which is what eight gosh let me, let me try to get it better let me try to get it so what is that 840 yeah 8, 848 somewhere around there oh, sorry Ah, I moved it. Sorry. Let me let me try to get a better view. Okay, 848, somewhere 840, 850. Uh, that could be another potential limit order, yeah, but you're gonna have to be patient because it may never hit. Uh, but that may be another limit order that you want to put if you're willing to be patient enough. So um, perhaps another one would be the the top of the top of this right here, which is 800. 800 so anyways as uh, far as I can tell we're still in an uptrend my target price is still 1600 and 5000 until I see an actual downtrend conf confirmation of a downtrend um, and what can cause a downtrend let me see here uh, Chinese withdrawal which is basically um, uh, Mount Gox a Chinese version of Mount Gox okay that could really hurt um, the overall price sentiment 
the ETF, uh, I don't know if it really hurt the price sentiment because no Bitcoins were lost or stolen or anything. This is this is all basically uh, hijacked, not hijacked, um, uh, speculator stupidity is what I would call it. And then um, the only thing I can see driving the price down is a split in the Bitcoin network. So the whole split in the Bitcoin network is the only risk to the overall price. And the Chinese exchange and Chinese miners, uh, how much is at risk to, to, the, to the whole network and Bitcoin? So now that the ETF is over, we can focus on those two things, Chinese miners and then Chinese exchanges, basically China. China is really going to be the focus up here because they're really trying to kill Bitcoin, man. I'm, I'm, they're doing, let me see here. They're trying to pull this. They're trying to do uh, this here. Let me see here. They're trying to do this here. All right. Let me see here. So that's, that's what they're trying to do. Anyways, um... Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed this. Um, let me see, I'm going to conclude this episode. So feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment, or even do a video response. Until next time, stay tuned. Bye.